the Huffington Post Media Group editorial director and David Korn. It's Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones, and they're both MSNBC political analysts. Howard, you first, and take a time here. Uh, it does seem to me that we've got two plans on the table. One is basically the same old, same old Republican plan. Now it's a two-step plan. I'll get to it in a minute. Boehner's is basically a watered-down version of what they sort of agree on without any tax increases of any kind. The Democrats are on their knees to try to make a deal here. They're, yes. they're getting closer and closer to genuflecting to the Republican side. No taxes, spending cuts only, the way the Republicans want it. Why not a deal? Uh, well, the Republicans don't want a deal. They'd rather have the fight than the deal. And the president is in the posture, and he's going to be in it tonight at 9 o'clock, of, of trying to say, look, they won't even accept a deal on their terms. He's genuflecting. He's genuflecting to try to make a political point which is that the Republicans are only in it to make him look bad, to create chaos in the market, to undercut the economy. So you really believe that it's that they know the danger we're facing on the world market? That the Republicans yeah. do? They know they're no, playing they, with they, fire. They don't, they don't necessarily believe it. What I'm saying is the president was willing to genuflect, meaning to take any revenue increases or tax increases right. out of the so-called Reid plan, the Harry Reid plan, which the White House approved of, by the way. Harry Reid didn't put that out, I was told this afternoon, in, without, obviously without the support of the White House. He checked with the White House before he did it. Now the president's going to go on the air tonight and push the Reid plan, which has no revenues or taxes in it. So he's genuflecting giving up all the political points to be able to make okay. the spin doctor's point that it's the Republicans well, who are being Well, I think they're making that point legitimately now. Yes. I think it's yes. real. It's not yes. just PR. Right. Let's take a look at the Reid plan very quickly. It has one step. It raises the debt ceiling through the 2012 elections. That helps the president. It includes 2.7 trillion in cuts, but it does nothing to entitlements. It has no new taxes, and the savings really come in part from ending the wars eventually in Iraq and Afghanistan, about a trillion dollars there, highly questionable there. Here's Speaker Boehner's plan while we're at it. The Speaker Boehner plan has two steps in it. It totals $1.2 trillion in cuts. It has a six- to nine-month debt ceiling extension, followed by a commission which will find another $1.8 trillion in cuts and then another debt ceiling mechanism next year sometime. So, D David, it seems like the president is basically saying, all I want is to get this out of the way before the next election. In that interest, I'll give you what you want, basically. Well, the Democrats, the White House and Harry Reid, have drawn a line in the sand. The problem is, it's inside the Republican tent. Right. I mean, it's like, it's like basically up to the bedroom. <laughs> They want a dollar-for-dollar dollar cut in spending to match any right. debt ceiling increase, and they still want some kind of trigger mechanism for a balanced budget amendment. So they're still holding out ideologically. Oh. Here's Speaker Boehner late this afternoon when asked about the Reid plan. Let's listen. I believe uh, that uh, the plan uh, is full of gimmicks. Uh, we're not making any real changes in the, the spending structure of our government, and it doesn't deal uh, with the biggest drivers of our deficit and our debt, and that would be entitlement programs. Well, are the Republicans dealing with entitlement? Well, they're not touching that either. They're putting so, that to the side now. They, 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 <laughs> How can he listen, say that listen, then? They have forgotten the number one rule of hostage taking, which is when the other side gives into your demands, you let the hostage go. But I don't think they're interested in doing that. At least 100 members no. of the Republicans on the House side, I think, want to blow up the economy because they think that will save the well, economy. Well, they want a couple of things. They want to, they, they're yeah. certainly willing to risk a worldwide uh, yes. explosion at our expense yes. in terms of these markets around the world. We never know which day they're going to go south on us. But they also want something else. This little second attack next year. Yeah, that's, yes, that's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. At least that's what Speaker Boehner's trying to, to do. He, he's speaking. He was speaking right there to the Tea Party Republicans, essentially. And he was saying, okay, we're not giving you the cut, cap, and balance thing. We're not, we're not giving you that set of gimmicks. But don't worry, folks. We're going to force the president to go through this whole debt ceiling thing again next spring, at just as the presidential campaign is really right gathering Right picture state. candidate. Right. right. And, and that, so, so that's how we're going to try to satisfy you, members of the Tea Party. We're offering you that plus no revenues plus that, votes that, plus votes on the balanced budget amendment too somehow so, on the, so the next year will be devoted to arguing over that then arguing over the debt ceiling again so so here's year. a country ours yes republican democrat and independent that instead of focusing on the fact that half the kids in this country don't graduate from high school which right. is our future and that we have an infrastructure that's crumbling and the government does have a role doesn't it, besides national defense and cutting taxes it does have a role we don't talk about the role of government anymore we just talk about cutting taxes 
and debt control. That's all we do listen, anymore. Chris, did anyone mention the word jobs today? Well, that's a question, I mean, too. I mean, that's the other thing. What, where, where are the jobs? For either side, we've gotten off on the track of deficit reduction over everything else. Well, here's my question, more fundamental, getting to that point, because yeah. I want to bring this back home. You guys both know a lot about economics. It's simple as this. If we had the balanced budget amendment in effect right now, exactly with the, their nirvana, yeah. you'd basically be reducing government to about 20 percent of GDP. You'd be cutting it from 3.75, which it is right now, to 3.0. OK, okay. big deal. But that would be the difference. OK, that would be a lot less government spending. Do they believe that a lot less government spending right now would be good for the economy? Do they believe that their own solution would be good for the economy? Well, they, be they believe it. The hardcore of the Republican Party believes it. But most of the rest of the world does not. Yeah. That in a recessionary time, which we are still in with unemployment the way it is, with manufacturing regaining some strength but so uncertain, right. with, with demand being down overall, consumer demand being down, you don't withdraw hundreds of billions of yeah. dollars out of the economy at that time. Well, I mean, that, and that's what drove the president to propose the stimulus he did at the beginning. That's what proposed, that's what kept him from attempting to raise taxes and from accepting the Bush tax cuts earlier on as a way to stimulate okay, the let me, economy. Let me put some... And that ends up putting the president in a difficult position politically now to try to raise taxes. Let me ask you, Harry, is it possible what the Republicans are up to here? As I hear this from people around me who are on the progressive side, and you hear it probably, you're on the progressive side. Is it possible that despite all this, we're all in this together talk we like to engage in, yeah. and I believe in, yeah. that some people on the right are quite willing to see this country get burned in the butt, to really get hit by the world market, to really start seeing spiking interest rates, to really see a drop in our bond rating, hellacious stuff so that they can make their point. They're not at all willing to, they're not at all willing to avoid that at the, at the cost of their own ideology. Well, I think that... It's a little you hear bit, that I think some of them? Yeah, I, I think some people fear that or suspect that. I think the reality is that there are people who don't believe in reality. They don't, believe, they don't want to listen to people in the government or people on Wall Street. We know better. We tighten our belts. When things go bad, the government has to do okay. the same. But I do think there are some. I think Ron Paul said this just today or the past few days. We should default. Default would be good for America. It would put us back on the gold standard and whatever he believes. So there are, uh, there are people who do believe you've got okay. to burn the the village to save the village. I think it's part of this, this, this flat earth society that doesn't believe in science, doesn't believe in human history, doesn't believe in global change, yes, global climate, nothing. What's, what's going on here, as I see it, is a kind of slow motion secession. This, this, is, this is an ending of the social compact. This is two gener or three generations worth of agreement about Social Security, about Medicare, about the role of the federal government. The Tea Party people are saying, we want to secede from that society. And the way to do it is to draw the line on spending and taxes, to starve the federal government so that it loses power, so that we aren't part of the social compact anymore. And that's the real argument that's going on. And the Congress as an institution is incapable of dealing with that kind of fundamental argument, which is given in the entitlement age, in the welfare state age, which is why you have the super committees and the super duper committees and the smaller and smaller ring of people attempting to you decide something. You know what this sounds something. like? You, know what it sounds you, like? you hear what I'm saying? When I spent two years in Southern Africa, it sounds like what the whites talked about doing. Eventually, yeah. going into some sort of little circle, like yeah. a, the, the Custer's Last Stand yeah, against the United States, well, by the way. That's a hell of a state. That's a book right there. I, I, I wish I'd written it before no, but I it's, it's, I think it's, it's, not, it's like withdrawing money from yeah. the bank, but it's more like withdrawing money from America, saying, I'm pulling out my investment yeah. in America yes. and my family's well, homeschooling. Right. It's all those things people right. are doing right now we're to get away. We're talking about competing visions of society. The president has made this point. In fact, if, when he cut that tax cut deal in December, he was setting himself up for the this battle. He knew this was coming either through the debt oh. ceiling or something who's else. Winning? And this would go right to the who's 2012 winning? election. Last word, who's right. winning? Well, the American people the are losing. Are, the Republicans are winning. The president tried to get ahead of this. He's not ahead of it. Who's winning? Uh, the Republicans have control of the I agenda. Think, I, I, it's in their own, it's in in their own tent. The, the yeah. line was drawn. You made the metaphor. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, guys. Howard. Sure thing. Pretty good line. <laughs> the line in the sands within the Republican tent. And